Backing Toward Consciousness by Don Carroll. My book is what's called a, a spiritual suspense novel. And uh, it is sort of like the Da Vinci Code in that sense. There is an underlying mystery that is to be solved by the characters. And at the same time, they're all on their spiritual journey in some way. I like to read uh, a little bit about one of my favorite characters in the book. And, and, and she's a character I think that sort of uh, we see evolve and develop the, the most through the novel. She'd gotten on the first Trailways bus leaving town without ever knowing where it was going. And that was how she had ended up in a small, nondescript Midwestern college town. She liked Professor Gallagher. Well, not exactly like, but he was okay to be around because he was always seemed to be somewhere else far away. She understood that, and because of it, he did not freak her out like most men did. She had just been so pleased that he had hired her, and now for the first time in her life, she was somewhat financially secure. Over on her desk, the one non-chaotic place in her apartment sat her pride and joy, a brand new MacBook Pro with the most powerful insides that Apple had to offer. She had already souped it up a little more so that it had plenty of space to run her de-encryption program, as well as several foreign language voice recognition programs. She had bought the new Apple with the travel expense money for the trips to Chicago, Boston, and Stanford that she had never actually made. Who knows where Professor Gallagher might ask her to go next. She hoped it would be far enough away that the professor would budget more than $1,000 for travel for the trip, which would be more than she needed for a new tattoo she wanted, which would join her ever-extending network of tattoos. Mostly those tattoos remained out of sight beneath her clothes. She had found that tattoo artists were a pretty unsavory lot, but even most of them did not have the stomach to work long hours looking at her scar-ridden body. Not Tattoo Master Dang. She had heard that he escaped from South Vietnam on a boat at the time that the U.S. pulled out. His face always remained totally inscrutable, but gradually she had learned that she could trust him, at least as much as she trusted anyone. In him, she had found a tattoo artist who did not mind using the white lines of her scars in his artistic designs. Sometimes she let him come up with his own designs based on utilizing the scars of her body. Other times she had an image in her head that she would draw out of him, which he would bring to life with his needles and ink. She still worried that Professor Gallagher might find out about her past or the lack of the requisite past. Blaine was working as a graduate student assistant, yet she had not even been to college. In fact, she had not even graduated from high school. Still, she prided herself on always doing her work thoroughly, and her revisions to the college students' records making her one of their top graduates had been meticulous. The only problem that might arise would be from the complete lack of any paper documentation. And of course, the college was putting money into a fictitious social security account that she would never see. But in her heart, she believed the chances of her living to retirement age were extraordinarily slim. She opened the two small windows in her apartment that allowed for some cross ventilation. She was only vaguely aware of the noisy chattering of birds that spring was in the air. She popped open the silver cover of her MacBook Pro and only a minute was deeply engrossed in finding her way through the firewall of the next university Professor Gallagher might ask her to visit. Uh -huh.